Namaskar. This is Madhur Gupta, editor of Optician India Magazine. And today we have with us Mr. Daryl Newsom, president of the Association of British Dispensing Opticians. Hello, sir. Today, sir. So uh, I'll ask you the first question. What effects uh, does the eye care and eyewear sector have on the environment? And how can we contribute to the optical world becoming more sustainable? Well, it's not just the optical industry. Um, this is true of all industries. So the impact that we have on the, on the environment can be broken down into really four main areas. The first one is carbon emissions. Um, you and I travel to work. Our patients travel to our practices to see us. We order the spectacles, which are delivered by a third party. So there's a lot of fuel um, used just to run an optical practice. And we can't stop that. That's that part of life. But we can think about reducing it. The sustainable journey is a journey. And we'll never, ever get to the end of this. It's only ever going to be ongoing. So reducing carbon footprint straight away is, is one way that we can help the environment. Then our use of energy at work and water at work, these are resources that are absolutely vital to our, our planet um, and overusing them, wasting them, etc., is somewhere that's easily cut down. Um, then <clears throat> we have a, a huge challenge within the optical industry in procurement, in our buying practices. So when we go to market to buy our spectacles, we now have, in, in my practice, we now have a policy, uh, a sustainability policy. We ask our suppliers what they're doing to help reduce their impact on the planet. We are buying specifically eco-friendly plastics. And these new nylons, the injection molding process has much less waste than the old routing process of processing acetate. Although we still use a lot of acetate. And this becomes much more complex because there are levels of manufacture that we, quite frankly, at the moment, we can't access. So when I buy a frame off my supplier, I have no way of knowing where they bought that plastic from and whether that plastic, when we, we even have presentations in our clinical meetings from Anti-Slavery International, in case there's any forced labor used in the production of the acetate and the cotton. And of course, all of these things are difficult and easy to hide. So we have to ask the question and then hopefully the suppliers will start to listen and go, they care. So if I turn up with a product that is better, they have a better chance of selling it. And then of course, the biggest thing in the UK practice is waste management. Um, we had we did a waste audit and just collected all of our waste and we all sat down and we looked at what we were making what was the result of our manufacturing process and where where we were throwing things away unnecessarily where we could reuse things um, and this doesn't have to be at this stage it doesn't have to be an expense um, and it can be a really friendly environmental thing to do for, for instance the rubber bands that we get in practice we get 100 rubber bands every week on various products, and yet we don't use rubber bands. So I walked around my, my town and went into different shops and asked people, do you use rubber bands? Do you buy rubber bands? So we now supply the local shops with their rubber bands free of charge, but our rubber bands are reused and they don't get disposed of. And it's simple things like that. They're, they're all small steps. And this journey is all about taking small steps towards a better, better future. And as you stated in the C summit on October 3rd as well, carbon net zero is a global mandate. And Thiago Gentile from Planet Zero also shares their intriguing journey to net zero in the summit. My question to you is, how can we realistically attain carbon net zero specifically in the Indian market? I'm, I'm a lucky man, and I have visited India on many occasions. So I'm quite familiar with the environment. I've been to the north, I've been to the south, I've been to Goa, I've been to the east coast. And it is one of my favourite places in the world. And I appreciate 
you have something of a waste problem in some areas. Uh, and this is this is a global global problem, and it's not it, that's not just opticians, but we are opticians, so we've got to look at it from our perspective. Um, what, what can you do in the Indian market? Reducing the waste is massive. Um, recycling and, and reusing products. We have a, an issue in the UK where some opticians won't reglaze spectacles because, of course, it reduces sales. And we have to start embracing this and saying, actually, reglazing spectacles is proper recycling. And so long as the frame is of a quality that can support that optical aid, we should be doing that. And we should make it a part of our sustainability policy is that we repair and replace um, and reglaze. So there's quite a few things there that we can do. There's a load of things available on Abdo's website. Ideas in our C-Hub. Um, you can get to see lots and lots of different ideas and um, case studies. You can read what other people have done. Uh, and it's ideas from other people that generally, some of them you just look at and go, I can't do that where I live. Um, one of the ideas that <clears throat> came to my desk was changing all of our printers from cartridge printers to eco-friendly ink printers. Um, which we didn't do all at once because that would have been disposing of good printers that were still working. But as each one died, we replaced them with better, more eco-friendly printers. So it's all little steps and, and ev everybody, everybody can be involved. This isn't a management problem. This is, a, this is a problem for all the staff. And what we've done in Abdo is in every department, we've appointed a, a champion of sustainability. And they look at all the different ideas and suggest different ways that their department can become more sustainable. You also stated that a business is not truly sustainable unless it's also profitable. How should this practice be achieved in the Indian market, in the Indian context? Well, this is, <clears throat> this is a, a true challenge, isn't it? So it is absolutely true. There is no sustainability if your business isn't going to be here next year. So the whole concept of sustainability is that we, we actually thrive. We don't survive, we do well. So there's, there's different parts of this. And in recycling and environmental issues, generally speaking, the attitude has been, there's no money. You know, where's the money going to come from? The UK market, our suppliers have been ground down over the years. My father was an optician. So I've worked in this industry for 50 years, um, almost. <clears throat> and as a child, the, the gifts my father used to get from the representatives were fantastic. We used to get some very expensive, very valuable gifts. Things like we had a whole cutlery service um, one Christmas, which was all um, silver, silver electroplated. Um, but it was a very expensive cutlery set. Um, those sort of gifts don't come anymore. We've ground our suppliers down to discount, discount, discount so much. We can't now go to our suppliers and say, now you have to pay for recycle. So there's a big part of me, is, and this has been a big step for me, um, to realise that recycling and, and environmentally living comes at a cost. And we have to accept that cost, and so do our customers. And trying to tell people who have been popping into the practice for 20 years and dropping off their old spectacles and dropping off their contact lens packaging all of a sudden we're saying to them can you make a donation to help in the transport costs of these recycled goods because we have to send them somewhere and it costs money and people get it it's having the time to educate the public educate your customers educate your your uh, local communities so that they understand what you're trying to do is good for the planet it will mean that you're there next year and yes there is a slight incremental cost but that's that's not as, as important as the sustainability and the ethical way of, of uh, operating and uh, as you mentioned there are other initiatives of abdu also in environmental conservation so what uh, could you briefly tell us uh, about them We've got all sorts of resources, um, <clears throat> and one of the things that 
we, we did the sea summit the sea summit is on the website and is available to be downloaded and, and watched whenever you like and um, i apologize for my presentation on the day i kept looking down to it but we live and learn don't we um we have a carbon footprinting resource on the website that you can check your own carbon footprint um, we have a sustainability policy template so it's very important in a work environment that you can document this is our sustainability template this is our our um, policy on what we do environmentally this is what we're trying to achieve and any member of staff any customer can look at that and they can judge whether or not you're you're conforming to those intentions um, and the fact that you've got a policy there has got to signpost you as being somebody who's considering it even if you're not solving all of the problems uh, we also have a sustainability tool available on the website which you can fill in it's like a questionnaire anybody can can uh, can do it you don't have to be a member you fill out a questionnaire and it rates you it grades you on how sustainable your practice is currently and then you can highlight areas where you can improve and then in three months time six months time you can go back and do it again and see if you get a better score and you can quantify things this way it makes a, it makes a huge difference if you know where you're trying to get to so having that policy there and, and telling your staff what you're trying to do everybody gets on the same team on these tools uh, related to sustainability now how do we adopt uh, for the indian businesses they will fit into the indian business quite nicely but as i said earlier probably one of the most important things is education and certainly when i first started looking at this for myself i didn't know what sustainability was um i i really did have to sit down and think about it and there's a, there's a fantastic american website called coursera um and coursera does free access courses on thousands and thousands of different subjects but one of the subjects you can study on there is sustainability and it gives you an idea of what we need to do to make the place better so any of these and it's all about free access the beauty of the american education system is they provide the education and you only pay if you want to take the exam so you can get the information anybody can get it you don't have to pay for it and once you know what sustainability is, you're much more likely to make better and informed choices. Thank you so much for your, you know, uh, invaluable time and, uh, you know, uh, coming on to our platform at such a short notice. And uh, we, would, we would like to work with you very closely in the future for, uh, you know, on this subject as well as on the other topics of education as well for the Indian market. Thank you.